it's 2020 and we can't fly in planes right now. But maybe us mammals aren't meant to fly. Maybe some mammals are meant to glide. <laughs> Let's find out about that in our little red jungle. Wow, look, now there's so many plants and animals. Today we are in the forested areas of central Singapore and camouflaged against the tall trees there are these nocturnal, large-eyed creatures of the night. Sunda Kalugos also known as Malayan or Sunda flying lemurs, and scientifically as Galeopteris variegatus, this is actually one of just two species of Kalugos and is found throughout Southeast Asia. The other species, being the Philippine Kalugos, is endemic only to, well, the Philippines. Although sometimes called flying lemurs, that's actually a misnomer, because neither are they true lemurs, nor can they actually fly. Instead, they are gliders. Using a kite-like skin membrane called patagium that stretches from their neck and in between their limbs and to their tails, kalugos are able to spread their bodies out into a large geometric parachute that keeps them up in the air as they travel from tree to tree. And through this method, they are able to glide for about 70 meters, which is roughly the width of an Olympic-sized soccer field, while losing minimal altitude, all in just one jump. Being arboreal, as with most gliding mammals, there are several hypotheses as to why these animals have evolved the ability to glide. One reason is that gliding is an energy-efficient way for animals, such as kalugos, to forage from tree to tree. As they are herbivorous and mainly feed on leaves, shoots, flowers, sap and fruit, it actually takes a lot of time, energy and safety risks to travel up and down trees through the forest floor. So why not just stretch and take a chill, air-powered ride instead, right? Another potential reason for this adaptation is that gliding makes for a great means of escaping predators, especially when mother kalugos carry their young with them for a good six months. And having natural predators like the reticulated pythons, the changeable hawk eagles, and even the long-tailed macaques, it is plausible that these kalugos use this jump and glide trick to escape from being eaten. However, by the looks of their mottled brown and grey fur, they've got a great ability to camouflage on tree trunks, so potentially that is their primary means of avoiding predation. But even though they are the Earth's most accomplished mammalian glider, they have one major weakness. If there's too much space between trees, a kalugo may risk gliding down onto the ground instead, where it is at its most vulnerable. You see, because of their morphology with their patagium, kalugos are not able to just get up and run off when they're on the ground. Instead, they're only capable of like hopping clumsily to the nearest tree. Heck, even climbing up trees also, they can only hop up. This leaves them and their young vulnerable to their fast predators and the even faster cars. In our highly urbanised Singapore, where many roads and highways fragment and cut across forests, this creates a big problem for these kalugos. And kalugos do travel quite a bit, especially since kalugos can be territorial of their foraging and sleeping areas, or because they just want to venture into newer forest areas to find potential mates. So how do we as a country help these precious animals, especially with our constant construction and upgrading? Okay, first up, kalugos do not do well in captivity because aside from being very sensitive creatures, it's actually essential for these kalugos to be able to glide long enough distances so as to keep their patagium dry and well maintained. Otherwise, these animals will develop fatal skin infections, which is why we cannot remove them from their natural habitat. So to work around the problem of roads like the BKE and Mandai Lake Road that cut across our reserves, Ecolink bridges have been constructed as connecting paths for wildlife to access between forest patches. And long poles such as these were also erected to help kalugos travel across the road. Designed to mimic actual tree trunks of varying heights, these long poles are strategically placed along known and documented kalugo paths. And ever since their introduction, kalugos have been spotted using them to get around from place to place. And although they do prefer dense canopies, instead of being on solitary poles with no leaf cover, these methods, alongside others like traffic speed limits, have shown to be wonderful alternatives to keep these animals thriving. So you know what? 
maybe there is hope after all for animals and humans to progress together as a unit, so long as we respect them and always keep them in mind. Now that is all we have for today's episode. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook and all those fancy stuff. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to watch more videos of our local ecology. Thanks for watching and remember, keep your eyes peeled because it is a jungle out there.